Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will take a look at dynamic event handling in WX widgets. Let's get straight to it. In the last video, we created these event handlers for a few simple events. We defined the bindings between events and event handlers statically using this event table here. It's important to know this approach because it used to be the only way, so you will see it used in a lot of examples online. That being said, static event handling has many limitations. Because the bindings are set up during program compilation, the approach is kind of rigid. You cannot add a binding based on some condition, set up multiple bindings in a loop, or remove a binding at runtime. With dynamic event handling, we can do all of those things. Let me show you how it works. We start in mainframe.h. Here we declare our event table using this macro. There are some green warning squigglies here, even though our program works as intended. I believe that the macro and the actual event table confuses Visual Studio a bit. Thankfully, with dynamic event handling, we don't need either of them. So we will delete this macro. And in the implementation file, we will delete the entire event table. And we actually don't need our custom IDs either. For our three controls, we will use good old WXID any. Let's start the program. Everything looks like before. But, of course, nothing happens when we interact with our controls. We have to set up bindings between the events and our event handlers. Instead of using an event table, we will use the bind method. Bind comes from a class called wxevthandler, which every control inherits from. So they all have this method. When using bind, your event handler can either be a class method, a functor, or an ordinary function. That's why there are three different overloads. Our event handlers are class methods, so we need the first overload. The signature looks a bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple to use. Many classes generate multiple events, so first we must specify which one we are interested in using an event tag. We want to know when the button is clicked, so we have to use wxevt button. The next parameter is the class method that should be called. In our case, that's on button clicked. Note that we need a pointer to the method, so the ampersand is required. The final, non optional parameter is a pointer to the object that will handle the event. In our case, we should just pass in this. That way, on button clicked will be called on this instance of mainframe. Let's see if it works. If I click on the button, you can see that our event handler is called. Next up, we have the slider. The event tag we need is wxevt slider. The class method is on slider changed. And we want this object to handle the event. Finally, we have the text control. The event tag we need is wxevt text. The class method is on text changed. And we pass in this again. Does it work? It works. How did I know which event tags to use here? I checked the documentation, of course. 
The event tags are usually called the same thing as the event macros, but prefixed with wx. The final thing I want to show you is how to remove a binding. To do that, we need to call the unbind method. Let's try to unbind unbutton clicked. The method takes the same parameters as bind does. So we just pass in wx evt button, the on button clicked method, and this. Now nothing should happen when we click on the button. Perfect. That's it for this video. I recommend that you stay away from event tables and use dynamic event handling for everything. It's a more flexible approach and the code is much simpler in my opinion. Next time we will cover an important and tricky event concept. You will also learn about other types of events, including mouse events and keyboard events. See you next time.